Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Honestly, I feel like my intro is so long, I need to cut it down half. But anyway, containers and boxes are meant to contain things, they're meant to keep whatever it is inside. But why can that never be the case? Why are we so nosy? We can never just leave things be. We've done cursed treasure, we've done cursed paintings, cursed jewels, but now today it's time for the top 10 cursed boxes that should have stayed shut. Starting us off at number 10 is the Dibbuk box. Now this is a wine box that's said to be haunted or cursed by a Dibbuk. Dibbuks are usually malicious possessing spirits that are believed to be the dislocated souls of dead people. Now there's no such thing as a Dibbuk box, they usually don't inhabit inanimate objects, they inhabit people, but the moniker was made by the guy who auctioned it on eBay called Kevin Manis. According to Kevin he bought the box at an estate sale but it belonged to a holocaust survivor who bought it before fleeing to America. When Kevin realized it was a family heirloom, he offered to give it back to the family, but they just didn't want it. When he finally opened it, it contained a lock of blonde hair, a lock of dark hair, a statue that had shalom engraved on it, a wine goblet, a dried rosebud, and a few other things. Various owners of the box said bizarre things had occurred when they opened it. Kevin himself said he started having nightmares, and his mum had a stroke the day he gave it to her as a birthday present. I mean, that's just not a good gift anyhow, but anyway, every owner of the box said something kept smelling like cat urine and they all had nightmares involving an old woman. A student claimed it caused the lights in his house to burn out and his hair to fall out. A museum director got the box after him and said he suddenly started developing bad health problems like coughing up blood, hives, full body welts, etc. He even went to a rabbi to reseal the box and he believes he managed it. Coming in at number 9 is the mystery box. This one's from ravioli underscore yours who ordered a mystery box from the dark web when he was drunk one night. That's when everything good happens. It cost $250 and it listed the items it would contain and one of which was an iPad. The next day he woke up and tried to message the seller saying he changed his mind but of course the listing was gone. After getting pissed at himself for wasting money he sort of forgot about the whole ordeal for a few weeks until his dad told him he'd received a package. Dun dun dun. It was a big box filled with packing chips and so the user opened it and found some pretty normal Normal items. A red sweater that smelled like perfume, keys, a jewelry box, weed, Xanax, and an iPad. So I mean, at least he did get the iPad he was promised. After being borderline annoyed, borderline satisfied with the contents of the box, his mum came in asking if he got a package. When she saw the item, she said, Oh, you found my sweater. And then looking at the jewelry box, she asked what her jewelry box was doing down there. Now the user started panicking a bit. He tried telling her it was in the package, but of course his mum thought that was bullshit. She sent him to his room and there he decided to turn on the iPad. The basic apps were all there and the email app was blank but he did find about a dozen photos. The first was the front of a random house, then the side of one, then of a kitchen which looked scaringly identical to his own, then the living room with the TV obscuring the watching people's faces, then a picture of a family portrait that was his family. He realized the pictures were taken inside his own house and there were pictures of his mum and dad asleep, of the red sweater being taken and the final photo was of the user himself asleep. In shock and fear, he smashed the iPad onto the ground and that was that. Moral of the story guys, don't mess with the dark web. At number 8 we have Pandora's box. I feel like if we're doing a list of boxes, there's no way this one can't make the list. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't actually a box at all but a big storage jar, but the story was mistranslated into a box. So just suspend your disbelief for me and we're going to just call it a box. The box was used to store many things things, grain, wine, it was even used for human body burying and the Greeks believed the souls escaped and returned to the jar frequently. Some accounts from famous writers say the box was full of all the evils in the world whereas many other accounts say it was filled with universal blessings. A huge scale over there. The story goes that Prometheus, a titan who was credited with creating man from clay, stole fire from heaven and gave it to humans. Zeus, the king of gods, was fuming at this and got revenge by presenting Pandora to Prometheus' brother, Epimetheus. Why do these names just roll off the tongue so nicely? I just, I just like Greek god names. Anyway, Pandora gave the jar to Epimetheus without him knowing it contained death, sickness, disease and all the other evils you could think of and then all of them were subsequently released into the world. Good going. She desperately tried to close the jar leaving one thing behind. Hope. These days it's associated with unforeseen problems and it'd be like opening a can of worms for example, that'd be like the nowadays saying equivalent. Filling our number 7 slot 
is the CD. YouTuber Alex Maynard decided to order a mystery. YouTuber Alex Miner decided to order a mystery box off the dark web because apparently everyone is down to give their home addresses to random potentially dangerous dark web sellers. Either way, when he opened the box, he found a handwritten note saying, "Dear friend, life is a mystery, a very very dirty mystery. At times, you never know what you're touching or what you're leaving behind." Cryptic. I like it. He was then also advised to wear gloves, which honestly he should have been doing regardless. Who knows where the person got these items from, if they're dirty, if they're contaminated, just always wear gloves. Either way, inside the box he found a USB, a bag of white powder, god knows what it was, probably cocaine, fentanyl, the possibilities are endless, heck it could even be baking soda. He then pulls out a black and blue tool that has a biohazard sticker on it. It sort of looked like one of those switchblade things, but of course Alex didn't open it. He also pulls out a half empty perfume bottle called Pink Kiss. Whether or not it's really perfume in there is inconclusive. He then pulls out a shaving razor that looked quite old and rusty but it had a peculiar red stain on it, which looked like it could have been dried blood or maybe it really was just rust, I don't know. The final thing Alex was blessed with in the box was a CD saying play me and when he puts it into his laptop it plays an audio file of kids laughing and playing with a voice behind that saying I see you. And that's all I need to hear at this point. Now at number 6 is the stone. YouTuber Jaskinho bought a Dybbuk box off eBay and in its description it said it was sealed with candle magic and binding ruins and that volatile demonic spirits were attached to the box. It also noted that the seller was not responsible for the effects the box had on the buyer. When he received the wooden box, it was sealed with red candle wax and carved into it were multiple pentagrams and other symbols that I, nor you, would recognize. But when he finally got it open, the first thing that hit the YouTuber was a strange odor. Next, he found a dead flower, which he passed around to his friends but they soon realized the flower was getting hotter and hotter to touch. The next and last thing he found was a small smooth black rock. After waiting a while and realizing not much was really happening, they decided to light the box and its contents on fire. You know, to really piss off the Dybbuk. They took the box outside but the only thing missing from it was the rock. They decided to keep it indoors in case any subscribers knew what it was. Either way, cut to them sifting through the ashes of the box, the rock is there amongst the ashes. They had no idea how how it got outside, let alone how it got back into the box and into the ashes, but it was there and it got there itself. How? Coming in at number 5 is the unknown flesh. YouTuber Jude Summers bought a £250 worth mystery box off the dark web and the inside of which was shocking. He found a note attached to some antibacterial wipes saying you might need these. As soon as he opened it up he was hit with a gross odour that he tries not to vomit over throughout the course of the video. Inside the box he finds boxing gloves because the seller clearly cares about him getting his cardio and upper body strength training in and he finds a Motorola phone, a teddy bear, a liquid and a small bottle, god knows what the liquid is. The worst thing he found though was a small fleshy object that was black. It smelled disgusting and he had no idea what it was. It definitely wasn't poop but I have a really really bad feeling it's an internal organ of some kind. Inside the same bag with the flesh he found an unlabeled pill. And last but not least he found a small screwdriver covered in blood. And my guesses are it was used to extract whatever that fleshy thing was from somebody's body. At number 4 is the face. YouTube channel Huff Paranormal decided to explore the whole Dybbuk box trend as well and bought a $50 box off eBay. The wooden box was sealed with red candle wax and on top of the box there was a small model of a bouquet of roses stuck on with candle wax over that as well. When he gets it open the first thing you can see is a mirror behind the lid side of the box. Next he pulls out a tiny naked baby toy of some kind, then he finds a pine cone, a die that has sporadic numbers on it, he also finds a black and white picture of someone's tombstone and a bit of church memorabilia which is actually a sign of good not evil. I mean maybe it was put in there for good measure, I don't know. He then goes on to light the box on fire but when he shows that clip the box has a black and white picture on top of it of a baby and I'm pretty sure the tombstone is that baby's tombstone. As the fire ignites everything is pretty much fine until the video doubles back and zooms into the flames. In the fire very clearly you can see a face, an angry looking face but you can see the eyes, the mouth, the nose, I mean it's all there. The YouTuber explains that sometimes spirits can show themselves by manipulating 
manipulating the elements which is clearly what happened with this Dibbuk box. But let me just tell you the spirit looked pissed as hell. Filling our number 3 slot are the murder boxes. Now I labelled it as such because after hearing about what was in the box I know for a fact a person or people were killed and these items are theirs. Youtuber Killin was one of the first youtubers to really solidify the dark web mystery box opening trend and his video got around 5 million views. In the video he bought 7 mystery boxes for a total of $500 each, yet only 5 of the 7 actually arrived. During the unboxing he found an Xbox, a DVR which I hope he doesn't play or open, a voodoo doll and considering it's a dark web I feel like the voodoo doll is linked to someone if not the youtuber himself. Trust no one people. Next he found a bunch of stuffed animals inside other stuffed animals which isn't dangerous it's just kind of weird. He also found a pack of unknown pills but at this point I feel like most mystery boxes come with at least some kind of drug. I feel like we've had weed, we've had Xanax, we've had unlabeled pills, this is nothing new. Now here's where it gets really screwed up though, he finds a bunch of worn underwear, a little girl's dress, I don't even want to imagine what happened to her, used heels and lingerie, a knife and ski mask and are you now seeing why I labeled them the murder boxes because this is literally a crime in a box. He also found a bunch of objects containing satanic imagery because we're already committing murder why not add in some occult for the culture. Last but not least he gets a USB which then corrupts his laptop as soon as he plugs it in. Now at number 2 is the detection. YouTube channel MindCTV ordered a Dibbuk box off eBay and he even had an EMF detector in his video. Dubbed the ghost meter it detects electromagnetic frequencies and fields and just energies in general. The wooden box itself was covered in thick red candle wax and on top of this one there seemed to be a black and white picture of something as well but I just couldn't make out what it was. He guides the EMF detector around the box not getting anything at first but as soon as he reaches the far side of it, it starts beeping. He made sure it wasn't the camera equipment by moving the box to and fro from the detector and it was true, it only beeped when the box was brought near it. He then uses a spirit box, man this guy is very prepared, to try and communicate with the spirit, cursing the box before he opens it. He asks if they're angry because they've been in the box for so long and he hears some radio chatter but not much else. He then asks if the spirit wants to hurt people to which you can clearly hear a yes. He opens the box and the odour hits him right away, why do spirits smell bad, I mean use some deodorant people. He pulls out a crystal of sorts and uses his EMF detector on it to see if that was a trigger which it wasn't. He then uses it again on the box and realises it's not beeping at all, which means the spirit isn't in the box anymore and here is where one should start to panic. He starts hearing a tapping sound behind him even though there's no one else in the room. Then without explanation his YouTube plaque that's mounted on the wall just falls off. After that the guy leaves his house claiming he's not comfortable staying there for the night, which is a really smart move. And finally at number 1 is the evidence offload. This one's also from YouTube channel MindCTV and he spent $300 getting framed for a murder. Best $300 he ever spent am I right? Either way he ordered a mystery box off the dark web and it was packaged in stealth packaging which basically means packing illegal items inside decoy objects like candy wrappers or stuffed animals to throw off suspicion. It's kind of like the Trojan horse of packaging. Anyway, out of the box he pulls out an old worn little girl's backpack. It's a purple My Little Pony one and it clearly looks well loved. The guy finds stains at the bottom of the bag and inside he finds pictures of an old abandoned building which is most likely the crime scene. Which honestly has me really worried for the kid who owned this bag, I mean it's just kind of terrifying to think about what the seller could have done to the kid whilst taking the items. There are honestly so many cases of child abductions around the world that it really is a very scary bag. The next thing he pulls out of the bag are a handful of children's books and on every single page there's a picture of a child, which is f pardon my French. Well, I mean what did the seller do, abduct these kids, are they thinking of doing it, have they done it already? I mean the next thing he pulled out was a brown leather box inside of which he found two doll things wrapped with fabric and then wrapped with cling film. But the odour coming off them was so horrendous it was unclear whether they really were dolls or corpse parts, I mean who really knows. The worst part was that attached to the back of one of the dolls was real human hair. Near the dolls he found bits of black fabric which seemed like it was the material that made the dolls themselves and inside one of them he found a human tooth with blood on it. They then pulled out four empty wine bottles all of which had different numbers hand painted on them. The last thing was a teddy bear inside of which they found a small red heart box inside of which they found a USB. When they played it it was a sick 
sick narrative, but needless to say, someone murdered some kids and offloaded the evidence onto this YouTube channel. And that's it for today's video, guys. I know this video was basically a 50 50 of Dibbuk box openings and dark web mystery box openings, but I thought 10 stories of Dibbuk boxes would have just been boring. And who doesn't like mystery boxes inciting fear in a person that isn't them? Everybody. Let me know what you guys thought of these stories in the comments below. And as always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you next time. Bye.